Let's get a move on. So I think The Last of Us by Naughty Dog is such a special game, not only as a game within itself, but its impact, I think, to the industry as a whole. So I really wanted to highlight and analyse the first part of the game, the prologue, which is split into four sections, and I think that it was designed by Naughty Dog to such a specific detail that every single second you play in it is leading towards this one feeling, and every single second of those minute details has led to one of the most impactful openings in a work of fiction, in my opinion, of all time. You get the money for this. So the prologue starts off with a black screen with these tiny spores floating across the screen and then you introduce to, in my opinion, is the main character of the prologue, Sarah. So the introduction of Sarah straight away uh, brings this dread emotion to you because even if you knew nothing about the game, you watched no press about it, you had no idea what the game was about, you probably looked at the box art and you know, you checked out the people in there and you go... Well, I seen Joel, and I see him right there, but that is not the girl that I see in this frame. And straight away, Naughty Dog definitely did this on purpose, that you were like, well, okay, something is going to happen between now and when you start the game in this setting, where this girl is not there for some reason. And straight away, at the turn of this game, you were just like, something is going to happen to her. Even though the game is started in this like cheering lounge room environment, you still have that feeling of dread. So let's bring it back to something else. So when I was in high school, I remember one of my teachers when we were studying Hamlet, as everyone knows that is a Shakespearean tragedy, and she told me that everyone walks into this play knowing that Hamlet is a tragedy and the main character is going to die. But if the writer, the director, the actors, anything in this play makes you feel at any point in time that this character is going to survive, even though everything logically you know about this work of fiction is that the character is not, then the writer has done their job correctly. And I really do compare this to Sarah in this situation, is that you've looked at the box art and you go, this character is not there. So in the interaction between Joel and Sarah, you get to know their relationship a bit. And what really does stand out through their actions and their talking is that Joel really cares for this girl. Everything is centered around her and she is everything to him. She gives Joel a watch for his birthday, which again is a really important symbol, which is recurring throughout the whole of The Last of Us. And they have a bit of a snarky joke, like she sells hardcore drugs um, to make the money. And they have a bit of exchange there. Again, you just get to know their personalities a bit. You laugh along. And at the end of this exchange you see Sarah fall asleep and Joel carries her to her bed. Now this is the first of three times in the prologue that Joel actually physically carries Sarah. But again to reinforce this beautiful relationship between the father and the daughter, like the act of physically carrying her, there's no other action I can think of which could show like this love even more than this like physically holding his daughter. And it is such a caring and protective act. So you wake up in Sarah's bedroom as Sarah with the phone ringing at 2am. It's the Uncle Tommy yelling for Joel. Sarah, you know, is half asleep. He's like, what the heck's going on? I don't know. So she wakes up to go look for Joel. In this part of the game, you are actually taking physical control of Sarah, which in my opinion made my heart sink even more. Like, it's firstly, you know, like she's not on the box art. Now you're actually being her, you're playing as her. And again, I think that's a deliberate decision by Naughty Dog to make you feel for this girl. So Sarah is animated with a sway right now. She's walking really slowly, like she is half asleep. Everything you see around the house, you can walk around in free sort of time. So you can interact with the environment. Once again, when you walk around the room, you can tell how close Joel and Sarah are to each other. You can find like a birthday card and stuff like that. Once you leave the room, there's numerous clues in the environment to show like what's sort of happening. And you do see this first all through media not actually happening to yourself. So Sarah's not that scared yet. And once you do walk into Joel's bedroom though and you see the TV on, then you look outside the window and again it's interactive and you see these couple of explosions outside your window. And that is when Sarah starts to get scared. It's not like when she reads it in the media, it's when she physically sees it happening to her own environment. Her voice gets shaky and you can see physically in her movements she's a bit faster 
but she's also a bit more timid in everything that's happening. When you get into the kitchen and you see Joel burst through the door, at first it's sort of like relief, but at the same time you're sort of like, why is my father panicking like that? As soon as Sarah sees her father panicking, you know, her protector, she starts to panic a lot more. And finally, when the neighbor who has become a runner has burst inside, Joel, you know, he comes up really close and Joel shoots him in the head. And this is the first real characterization of Joel. First of all, you hear Sarah, like, really frightened go, I saw him this morning. And then to be such normal people to, like, shooting your neighbor. Even Joel then, you can see in his personality that he is willing to do anything to protect his family or people he cares about at all costs. And this personality trait of Joel is shown again when you're in the car, you know, you're controlling Sarah, she's looking at burning farms of people she knows she's scared, and they drive past a family. And Tommy and Sarah are both willing to stop. And Joel says, don't stop the car. Even though this family has a kid, Joel says no. But again, Naughty Dog is showing Joel's selfish nature that he is willing to do anything in order to protect the people that he cares about, and he doesn't care about anyone else. Go! You got Sarah! I cannot run him! Uncle Tommy! I will meet you there! So after the car crashes, you physically take control of Joel. It's revealed she has a leg injury, so Joel actually has to physically carry her. And this is the second time in the game that Joel carries Sarah in his arms, this time in another environment. And it still shows, you know, even though there's chaos all around them, that this loving father-daughter relationship is still there as it is later and the longevity of it. And in this section there's a bit more of a gameplay introduction. You're running physically with Sarah and in this moment Sarah is still in shock but in my opinion I think that she feels a lot safer being carried by Joel than if she could have ran herself. I don't know how you guys feel but when I was like a little kid and say I was walking in the dark or something if I was by myself, I'd be frightened, but if my parents were there, I felt I was entirely protected. And I do think that's the same feeling that Sarah has with Joel. She doesn't feel as much in danger as if she was running by herself. So all in a cutscene, Joel runs down a hill and runs into a soldier. And just as I think Sarah felt relaxed when she was, you know, in her father's arms, so did Joel. You see in his eyes, he's so glad he sees, you know, a soldier, a protector for him. He becomes calm and he thinks, hey, actually everything could be alright. So the soldier raises his gun and you see Joel's face go from being relaxed to total fear again. And he turns away to protect Sarah. He does avoid being shot. But at this point, you know, he turns around and he realizes that Sarah has been. Now this is the all-time low point and most heart-wrenching moment of the entirety of the prologue. This is the third time that Joel holds her in his arms. He continually reassures her, you know, it's gonna be alright, it's gonna be alright. Just like he did when he was running with her. It's gonna be okay, baby. It's gonna be okay. He showed this same love and care, the same one that he was carrying her to bed, carrying her through absolute chaos and now holding her in his arms as she's about to die. And he keeps on yelling out this reassurance and in this final moments you know she's dead and you see Joel completely destroyed over her body. Seeing a young girl die in itself is emotional but the fact that this particular scene was so heart-wrenching is bringing it back to the Shakespearean tragedy thing. That every single second, every single minute detail of everything in the prologue is focused on us as the players caring for Sarah. The jokes that she made in the first section brought us into her personality, the act of physically controlling her as a character. We experienced the outbreak through her eyes. We were being her. And finally we can see the absolute love that Joel has for Sarah. Every single move he makes is for her first. And the best way that this was portrayed was in the three scenes when Joel was physically carrying her, caring for her, telling her she was alright. At these three times were all emotionally different experiences, but we felt the same love between Joel and Sarah in that act. At this point, every single person that played the game, that was watching the game, had this glimmer of hope that she was going to stay alive. Every single person, through everything that Naughty Dog did, every minute detail, made you believe 
that maybe, just maybe, she was going to be alright. Even though we all knew, just like a Shakespearean tragedy, that she wasn't going to make it. And that is why we spent only 15 minutes with the character, but we all felt so emotionally destroyed when Sarah died. Thank you everybody for watching. If you have enjoyed this video and you have friends that have played The Last of Us and think that they'll enjoy it too, make sure you share it with them. This is a different sort of video, so if everyone wants to see more Last of Us analytical videos, there is a ton more I can do. Let me know in the comments or tweet at me at mxgames and I'll see what I can do. If you are new to my channel, go check out some of my other videos and if you'd like them, make sure you subscribe and I'll see you again soon. Bye!